the United States of America is changing. The innocence of our nation was lost in bloody civil war. The horror of so many dead shocked our post-millennial Sunday school piety to its core. The Protestant ethic of our founding fathers was challenged on two fronts during the decades following the Civil War. The first challenge came from social secularization taught by the Age of Enlightenment and men like Charles Darwin, Karl Marx, Friedrich Nietzsche, and the German idealists. The second challenge came from massive non-Protestant immigration. The publication of Charles Darwin's Origin of Species in 1859 sparked an intellectual crisis for Christianity that no educated person could ignore. Darwinism focused the debate on the reliability of the first chapters of Genesis, but the real issue was the trustworthiness of the Bible as a whole. German higher criticism also questioned the historical accuracy of the entire Bible. To a Protestant nation in the 19th century, the absolute integrity of the Bible was paramount. When this cornerstone began to be shaken, major adjustments in social thinking developed in the American consciousness. The solid structure of Protestant America was shaken with the drifting of our American culture towards secular reason. Religion began to wane. The institutions of higher education, science and business shifted rapidly to a secular Darwinian consciousness void of religious morality. The second attack came from massive non-Protestant immigration. A sudden influx of Catholic immigrants produced a new wave of apocalyptic feeling that had gone dormant. The spawn of Papist Antichrist was coming to American shores. Post-millennialism would crack under the suspicion caused by this immigrant flood. The people questioned, how could post-millennialism be right? American society was not getting better. It was becoming more corrupt and secular. Congregations believed that the Protestant moral fiber of America was crumbling. The church needed to defend our Protestant cultural heritage against the onslaught of science and immigration. Post-millennialism was an illusion that evaporated with serious religious and political challenge. Clearly America was not the utopia envisioned by Jonathan Edwards and Charles Finney. Into the gap created by the cracking of post-millennialism, a new eschatology was heard, and that theory was dispensational premillennialism. This new theory will rediscover a literal interpretation of the book of Revelation. The driving force behind nearly 2,000 years of apocalyptic fear has been the book of Revelation. From the days of our apostolic fathers to the dawn of the 21st century, the vivid imagery of this book has produced numerous different interpretations. The tremendous impact caused by the book of Revelation is due largely to its heavy use of apocalyptic symbolism that is shrouded in ambiguity. Because of this uncertainty, each new Christian generation reinterprets the symbols through the current events of their day. 
How has the book of Revelation been interpreted throughout history? Four basic interpretations has surfaced at different times in church history, and these views are. The idealist interpretation sees the book simply as a depiction of good and evil with no prediction of future events. To an idealist, the book of Revelation is allegorical of the eternal cosmic conflict. Chief among the idealist theologians was Origen of Alexandria and, to some degree, Augustine of Hippo. Preterists interpret the book of Revelation as strictly a first century book with John describing the church condition of his day. This view sees the Antichrist as Nero and the Roman Empire as the great horror of Babylon. This system also claims that ancient Israel finds its continuation or fulfillment in the Christian church after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The history of preterism can be traced to a Jesuit by the name of Louis D. Alcazar in the 16th century, who wrote a 900-page book entitled The Investigation of the Hidden Sense of the Apocalypse. His goal was to shift the accusation of Antichrist away from the Pope to the first century past. He eventually succeeded in his mission. Historicism interprets the book of Revelation as prophecy that finds its literal fulfillment in the history of the Christian church age, past, present, and future. One of the main goals of historicism is chronicling the struggle between the true Christian faith and religious church apostasy. Early church records clearly show that the apostolic fathers of the early church were historicists. But allegory eventually supplanted historicism through the writings of Augustine of Hippo. Historicism experienced a renaissance during the Reformation through the writings of Martin Luther and John Calvin. Futurism interprets the entire book of Revelation, with the exception of the first three chapters, as futuristic prophecy describing the events associated with the second coming of Jesus and the end of the world. The history of futurism can be traced to the writings of the Jesuit Franciscus Ribera in the 16th century, who also sought to deflect the Antichrist charge away from the Pope. He made this shift by making the symbols of the book of Revelation literal and futuristic, not allegorical. He also eventually succeeded in his mission. It is amazing how a book written in the last decade of the first century could generate such controversy. All three eschatologies of premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism use the book of Revelation to justify their view of Jesus Christ and his second coming. Each millennial theory is uniquely different, but each uses the same symbols. Historic premillennialism had its chance to earn its place in history, but the allegory of Origen and Augustine replaced the pessimism of our early apostolic fathers with a view of the future void of historic application. For nearly 1,000 years, 
amillennialism reigned supreme through the political control of the Roman papacy. But this totalitarianism caused a resurgence of historicism and charges of antichrist swirled around the Pope. In order to escape these apocalyptic assertions, the Jesuits shifted the Antichrist and the Millennium into the distant past or the distant future. Post-millennialism came on the scene as a rejection of the bloody cost of pure historic millennialism and Antichrist chasing. The failure of post-millennialism allowed the futurism proposed by the Jesuit Franciscus Ribera to find fertile soil in England and America. Dispensational premillennialism is the new rising star in the eschatology tug-of-war seen throughout history. <laughs>